Hello and welcome back to the Perth to Paisley podcast, episode number 174. And we're back again without a manager, as has been the case a worrying amount of times during this show's lifetime, as Hearts lost again 2 1 to St Mirren in Paisley, and it signalled the end of Stephen Naismith's time as Hearts manager. To talk about that and everything else, I, as ever, am Daniel McIver, joined by Adam Kennedy, who was there for Stephen Naismith's final game. How are you? Without a manager, without a Scottish Premiership victory so far this season, um, I've been better, Daniel McIver, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, how can it be September and a good few people have written this season off already? <laughs> how have we found ourselves in this predicament after such a successful campaign last year? Is this just like the epitome of don't get too high, don't get too low. Um, and when you're winning, everything's fine. When you're not, the cracks begin to appear. And this is ultimately what, what we're facing at this current minute in time. Yeah, I think it's the harshest way of showing us that ever, to be honest. I would have got, I would have taken a seventh with a couple of wins and just going, oh, this isn't going. I didn't need it to be this bad for me to appreciate that sentiment. But we are where we are. Would you honestly rather mid-table mediocrity than a relegation battle? Yes. Just for yes, an, I would. From, from an entertainment point of view. We've been here too many times that it isn't really a battle. It's us just yeah, accepting yeah, the yeah, fate. Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. But yes. Worldwide pandemic, anyone? Ah, exactly. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. And give us another excuse. It'll be fine. It'll be Stop fine. the count as it yeah, stands. Exactly. So yeah, let's be honest, this is going to be a bit of a different episode. Normally we go in depth with the game and stuff like that. We're not going to do that because bluntly, there's no point. There's no point in wondering about systems and formations and personnel choices because all of the that's setup, out the window. Fashion choices, there. no Lyle and Scott hoodies, hopefully. It's the main success. The if Liam Fox rocks up at a Lyle and Scott. We're getting relegated now. What what's he gonna what's he gonna turn up in Foxy? Like, I don't know. Some Fred Perry polo or something. I don't mind about Fred Perry, I like about Fred well, Perry. Well, if he's there and we beat Ross County, it's down to that. It's, a, it's an upgrade on Lyle and Scott. That's, that's sure. true. Very true. But yes, we will start as ever around the grounds because there was a bit of a mix this past weekend, because obviously we weren't actually meant to be playing in the traditional calendar. Yeah, let's just bring forward our league fixture because we're out the cup and then get beaten said league fixture and then be on the lookout for a new manager. Yeah, but a, a Different class from HMFC, it has to be said. I, st- I do agree with it because it does alleviate our December fixtures somewhat. Yeah, I, but by then there could be some momentum gathering for a new manager, he said. Exactly. Exactly. So there was two Scottish Premiership games and a whole bunch of League Cup games. So on the Friday night, Motherwell progressed to the semi-final, beating Dundee United 2-1. On Saturday, there was just the two Premiership games, as we lost. And it was all happening in the Highlands, as managerless Craig Levine, now gone, Andy Kirk just went, I'm just going to play my laddie up front, because fuck it, I don't know how long I'm going to be out here for. And it was going so well for St Johnston, who found themselves... Like three one up with basically six minutes left, and you think this is fine, but no, Ross County get two goals in the last five minutes, and it finishes three all. And then on the Sunday, the other games were Celtic and Falkirk, just having a weird game. Actually, I was about to say your kind of standard game, but it wasn't at all. As Falkirk actually gave a real challenge to everybody, and then obviously on the night. Because I saw when did when did the other games kick off in the League Saturday Cup on night, Saturday? Half five. Were they Saturday? Were they both half five? Aberdeen so. comfortably, as expected, at Pataudry beat Spartans 4 0. And Rangers back at Ibrox for the first time this season Ooh. managed to put three past Dundee and win 3 0. Obviously, we have then seen that Rangers and Celtic have miraculously avoided each other yet again oh, in yeah. the Who semi-finals. Who would have seen that coming? I can't, I can't believe it. I'm stunned, if you ask me. Cannot believe it. And Celtic will play Aberdeen and Motherwell will play Rangers. 
What did you make of both the Premiership games and the League Cup games? Uh, start chronologically. I watched Motherwell Dundee United Friday night. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually a really good game. Some great goals. Uh, I mean, Louis Malt coming back to potentially haunt his former club with a fantastic strike after former Dundee striker Zach Robinson had fired Motherwell ahead. Um, but Lennon Miller is a, a joy. He's no bad, eh? Oh, my goodness. Incredible talent. Um, just, yeah, unbelievable. I, I really hope Motherwell get, get good dollar for him. Um, and I hope that he chooses the right the right move, obviously, from a, a Scotland perspective, but a real top, top talent. Um, yeah, I think that was the only tie, really, that could have gone either way. The yeah. rest of it, three... Three home wins as expected. Spartans, an incredible journey coming to an end. Hopefully they've managed to get some good dosh yeah. out of uh, reaching the quarterfinals. An incredible feat, considering when I first watched them, they were what battling towards the top of the Lowland League, which is yep. just phenomenal. Um, Rangers obviously beating Dundee. Actually more convincing than I expected. I expected yeah. Dundee to put up a better fight. Um, I think that Tony Doherty is building a really good squad there. I think uh, even despite the loss of Luke McCowan. I, th- I think Dundee will, will entertain goals at both ends. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was quite disappointing, obviously, from their perspective. John McGlynn, I thought, had thrown his hat into the ring. Yeah. The heart's vacancy. There he is. Like the Batman calling had just come for John McGlynn. Get the trackies shirt and tie combo back. <laughs> it's happening. And the cap. The <laughs> yeah, exactly. Slash Stormzy cap. Yeah. Um, however... I mean, just an incredible, incredible game. Some incredible comments from Brendan Rodgers afterwards, which yeah. was very amusing seeing everybody get rattled by a statement, which I actually understand the meaning of what he was trying to say. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, the other game that we can obviously chat about, St. Johnston, man. When have St. Johnston ever scored three goals in a game? And no. they still find a way to throw away two <laughs> points. Uh, I, there was a part of me that actually thought, oh, good, Ross County are, are getting beat and yeah. them coming to Tynecastle. And then it's like, oh, great, of course they nicked two goals back. And had they had a couple minutes more, probably go on and win that game. So now they've no doubt come down to the capital, full of belief, full of momentum. Um, yeah, that's great that Don Cowie will be celebrating on the Tynecastle touchline, um, not representing our fine club. So, yes, um, carnage, goals galore. Just just another standard weekend in Scottish football. Absolutely sensational stuff. And then... But get, our game, of course. You get to our game, which for St Mirren yeah. fans was great. Thunder season round, first week. They've only won twice against both <laughs> Edinburgh clubs. It's great. In Paisley. Both the season. Yeah. Yep, in Paisley. So, as I said, we're not going to go over the game in detail because it's very redundant. We're going to mainly be speaking about the Stephen Naismith situation. But we did get beat 2-1. First goal comes from a tailor, but initially you think it's one tailor, but it's actually the other tailor because a corner swung in and Richard Taylor meets it, you think, celebrates, runs off. However, then you've seen the replay, actually, we know it's our tailor, Jerry Taylor, who is now our top goal scorer with own goals as, not it back. No, as he heads it back good. into our net. However, 10 minutes later, you think, oh, we're doing something. Blair Spittle. <laughs> Cross it in. Craig Halkett. Life is good at that point. I, I was full of belief that we might actually come from behind and, and win a game of football. It was nice to see a score. That yeah. was the first time I'd, I'd seen it in the flesh because I missed... I've still not. Dundee <laughs> and Motherwell. Um, absolutely shocked that it was Craig Halkett of all people. If you if you just said Tough to me, for him. who do you think will be... The first goal scorer that you, or the first Hearts goal scorer that you see of the 24 25 campaign, I think Craig Halkett would have been possibly the least likely yes. game that I would have said. Um, and even less likelier that we've actually scored from a corner kick as well. I know. I, incredible. Um, that was Blair Spittle's only contribution in a maroon shirt on Saturday, um, because yeah. for the most part, I've been calling for him to be played higher up. Didn't see what else he offered. Um, but yeah, nice set piece. I, we concede plenty, so it's nice to see a score one. Well, we then conceded another one because in perhaps the worst way a professional football team can concede a goal ever, as Alex Goggins just stands at the halfway line and goes, I'm just going to kick this hard down the middle 
And our defence goes, we can't deal with that. We have no idea how to deal with that. Rocky Kent sat on the bench going, yeah, that's food and drink to me. But yeah. no, no, fancies it. Flicked on to Olasanya, who, in fairness to him, fucking yeah, rattles it past Craig Gordon. He make it 2-1, 34th minute, and then literally nothing happens for the rest of the game. So men have another couple of chances, if anything. But yes, that then, however, signaled the end. Lots of huffing and puffing, but no real blowing the house down. Um, exactly. Uh, I, second half, obviously, hearts are shooting towards us. All I can really remember is Lauren Shankland needlessly kicking out of the advertising boarding, and that was pretty much it. Would you like a fun Nothing stat for you? Really happened. The fact that you say fun makes me think that this is anything but fun, but sure, fire ahead. Hearts are 2-1 down in a must-win game, come out at half time. When do you think it took us to have a shot? Not a shot on target, just a shot in the second half. You're saying you can't remember many. 68 minutes. 83rd minute. It was our oh. one and only shot of the second half. Itaro Oda flies over from a corner. That was our one and only shot of the entire I half. I remember that. I do, because I actually remember thinking, that's actually a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. But it wasn't on target. So in a must-win game... Was that near side? No, far side. Oh, but near side to you. Wait, on yeah, your side, I, yeah. yeah. I, sorry. So, yeah. so I'm I'm behind the goal toward the left, just up. Yes, on your side. Yes. Yeah. Yep. In a must-win game... I, 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 I honestly could not have told you that. Yeah, a must-win game... We have one shot and a half. It comes in the eighth or minute and it isn't even on target. From a guy that hadn't even started in the first place. Yes, exactly. So that signaled the end for Stephen Naismith and the whole coaching staff as yesterday, as we record this on Sunday, the club released a statement. I will just read the statement. Armwood Lothian Football Club is today part of company with head coach Stephen Naismith and his assistants Gordon Forrest and Frankie McAvoy. Stephen, Gordon and Frankie leave hearts following a 17-month spell in the Tynecastle dugout. As the club's management team, of course, Stephen Naismith was formerly the B team manager. Gordon Forrest has been a part of general administrations before that as well. Speaking to the official Hearts website, CEO Andrew McKinley said, I'd like to firstly thank Stephen, Gordon and Frankie for all their efforts over the past 18 months. They worked tirelessly in their roles and without them, we would not have enjoyed the successes of last season. However, things can change quickly, particularly in football, and it has been clear for all to see that things are not working this season. Results and performances have fallen below the standards expected at this football club, and unfortunately, there is little evidence of any potential upturn in fortunes. With our UEFA Conference League campaign about to commence and the spotlight on our league position, we cannot afford to stand still. That is why we, as a board of directors, have made the difficult decision to part ways with the management team, go with our thanks and best wishes. We will update supporters shortly about next steps in both the short and long term, but for now, the club should be making no further comment at this time. Now, in a minute, I will speak about what those short-term steps are in terms of who's in the dugout, and we do have comments from Stephen Naismith himself, but until we get to that, what was your thoughts coming out of that game? Did you think it was a formality at that point that in the, in the coming days he would get sacked? Not really, to be honest. I, Interesting. I, I, I'll i be honest. Pre-St Mirren, I thought that he'd get the Ross County game. Was my my honest take, my okay. honest belief. Um, so I am somewhat surprised. That In fairness, yeah, you did say that last week. You did say yeah, on the I, show, I think, yeah. I thought regardless he'll get Ross County because I think then if we don't get a result at home, that like away games, yeah, okay. Like our away form was excellent last season, and and he is largely to to blame for that. But I think. Anything away from home is a bonus. The home is your bread and butter games at Tyne Castle. So I thought he'll get Ross County and only then, because the vast majority of the crowd will be, of course, Hearts fans, will our voices be, you know, heard, um, the concerns be raised and the board left with, with no option, should should it go wrong. Um, I just left thinking... What on earth have I just witnessed? Like that was rubbish, absolutely crap, piss poor. Um, so I think outsiders were p- 
pretty much thinking, well, that'll be that. That's that's the nail in the coffin. But I'll be honest, MacIver, I, I I wasn't one of them. I I genuinely believed that he was hanging on by by his fingernails. Um, but in saying that, Andrew McKinley's statement there, it's a clear and fair clarification. I don't I don't think there can be any arguments. Um, they've given the justification. We can all see it's not worked or hasn't been working. Um, mental to think that our last victory was Dundee on the 11th of May at Tyne Castle. Wild. Absolutely wild. Um, I And to be honest, I am pleased that they haven't stood still because I, I do believe that this can be rescued. I think third place is gone. Way. Yeah, definitely. I think there's no reason why we can't finish top four. Agreed. Um, Fully agreed. But we have to start picking up results sooner rather than later. And of course, that Ross County game on Saturday is a massive, massive match for everybody involved with the football club. I would agree that I I don't believe the, the season is gone. In terms of if you just view success as third, then yeah, I would say it is gone. But I, bluntly, I predicted even with Stephen Naismith, we wouldn't finish third at the start of this yeah, season. I pre we one. predicted fourth, so I still think we can get fourth. You um, predicted fourth, I said third. Oh yeah, of course, you did say third. That's um, yeah, not looking good now. But it's, I have such a degree with, of sympathy with everyone involved. I mentioned this last week that I do have sympathy with the board, that it's been an insanely fast decline. Six weeks ago, oh. We gave them, we gave that coach and staff a new deal, and it was met with universal praise. Everyone was delighted about it. It was really well done. We were it all buzzing. It's, it's genuinely like finishing third and being rewarded with a new contract as a curse as yeah, Hearts manager. Exactly. And before we kind of go into the analysis of it, we will hear from Stephen Naismith, who today, on the twenty third of September, released his first statement and comments after being removed from his position. So he said, I'm disappointed that my time at Hartman Lothian Football Club has come to an end. The season has been a frustrating one for a number of reasons and ultimately it just hasn't been good enough. When you're at a big club with demands and expectations and you go on a bad run of form, pressure is always going to come. I would like to thank everyone associated with Hartman Lothian, where I've spent nearly eight years of my career. From my first day, I formed a strong connection with the club and all who work there. I knew, understood and appreciated the standards and demands of HMFC and that was something I constantly tried to uphold as a player and manager. The board put faith in me and gave me the opportunity to become a leader at the club and I am truly grateful for that. I fully believe that this board are the right people to guide the club. I truly believe all they want is success. I also believe the club is very near to taking the next step and progressing to the next level, continuing on the trajectory it has been on. In my opinion, the squad, has play the squad of players has lots of potential, even though this season at times we have struggled to get going. I have full confidence that they will fulfil that, that potential. The challenge to play at a big club and to deal with the pressure associated is tough at times, but once you understand it and learn to deal with it, it's a great attribute to have. That is something I try to instil in the squad. There's a lot of hard work that goes in day-to-day -day at any football club, and I want to thank all the staff at the club who work tirelessly. Their support was felt throughout my time in charge. The fans are a huge part of the football club and their work to secure control of the club is special. Hearts have many great people who follow the club every week. The, the desire for success is clear to see. I really do hope you get some special moments in the near future. Please understand the power of your support when used in the right way. Keep following and backing the players. I'm pleased that in my first year as a head coach, I was able to bring a level of success to the club with European football, most league wins in nearly 20 years, most away wins in 32 years, and some good individual performances and results. My biggest hope is that from my time at the football club, I have helped make people better, whether that was on the pitch or off it. Now, speaking there, it just shows you how quick the declines happened. He had one of our greatest seasons ever last season. Like, there's no way of arguing around it. I don't really care how it happened in terms of Hibs and Aberdeen falling away, us having... A, it's not our fault. Yeah, exactly. And us having a striker who was performing way above his XG. It's like, well, yeah, but that's how that's how football works. That's how you get good seasons. Things fall for you. And he was the guy that brought that to us. And he mentions it as a player. I will happily say this. 
I think Stephen Naismith, in terms of footballing abilities, in the top ten players I've ever seen play for Hearts. Loved Stephen Naismith as a player. Loved him like like hated him throughout my childhood when we oh, were we. I horrible. hated that man. But when he came that to heart, that last gas winner for Rangers at Tigers. Oh, it's, I still sick. remember it. It's horrible. Still feels sick. But he arrived, and let's be totally blunt and honest. He arrived and was largely at the club at a time of not good times, <laughs> both when he was on loan and then when he permanently came as a player. But he was so often the bright spark in that period. And the the thing that I'm glad about which sounds weird what I'm about to say because it's people wishing he got sacked, but everyone has said there's no ill will towards him. Like, we all still love him and, like, we're so... Gu- everyone just seems gutted it's happened this way. And I personally, right, I think Stephen A. Smith will be a really good and successful football manager because I just think this five-week period has been, like, it's almost irrespective of who you are. No one can come back from this. And it seems like it's not going to be a regular thing with Naismith. It's like I said at the start, like everything quickly gets forgotten about when you're winning. It's only then when you go through that little lull, when your luck's in, it's in. Yeah. The minute that things begin to go wrong, that's that's when it becomes it becomes tricky. And that Stephen Naismith is a, a young football manager. An, an inexperienced coach. Well, not an inexperienced coach, but an inexperienced top job. Yeah. You know, inexperienced in a top job is what I'm trying to say. He, you, you can't, you couldn't possibly begrudge him for taking the job when it was offered to him. Yeah. Ha, like, yes, that season was a, a frustrating one, but you could see that uh, that the things appeared bright initially when we got that bounce underneath but toward the end of that season and then it was like okay as much as not everybody was on board with the appointment you go right okay let, let's see what all this is about there is always a massive element of risk but we're, we should rewrite history it was a really good an enjoyable campaign last season but just goes to show you what what can happen in football uh, uh, like the turnaround has been bizarre. How quickly it's happened, just how we've fallen from, you know, like I don't want to say European regulars, but certainly third, fourth minimum to now. Now we now we're struggling to score a goal. Never mind yeah. record a victory. Um, That's but- the biggest thing for me as well. Like, listen don't want this to just be like, it sounds like we're like, he's been hard done by because I'm about to read off some stats here. It had to happen, but it's just, as you said, as you said, it's shit with the way that it's happened. Yeah, definitely. But, and it is, and it like, you can see a lot of it's down to experience or stuff like that, but there was things that just felt like idiocy in regards to Naismith's time this season. And I, I accumulated some stats here. So it's like, Four, we've played seven domestic games, six in the league, one in the cup. And in that time, we've played 14 different formations slash systems within those seven games. Players such as new signing Blair Spittle and Stephen Kingsley as the kind of two examples are routinely played out of position and then kind of thrown under the bus as a result. Eight games on the bounce without a loss in the season are second worst run in the club's history. I know that... That's stats. That's yeah. unbelievable. I know, as you said, one win in the last 14 competitively, if you go back, including the last few games of last season, which I do always say there needs to be a caveat because the season was kind of done by the time we went into the split. It didn't really of matter course. what happened with those games. But still, it still is a stat that he is one in 14 in his last competitive game as Hearts manager. As much as we both deem preseason nonsense, if we'd had a decent performance in pre-season as well, I think he would have got some leeway. Yeah. The fact that we played so few fixtures and there was none, no real positives to take from, you know, the Tottenham game, the Fleet Wait, match. Would. I, I like, I, I, had we seen something, you'd maybe give them that bit more leeway, but nothing had been happening from when the season kicked off, even in, you know, friendly games. I know a lot of people don't care about XG, but... I'm included. XG of the last four games, and 
if you take away the Celta game, which was 0.65, right? Because it's kind of like, okay, you're still away at Parkhead, like, whatever. But Dundee United, Muddle and St Mirren, as Hearts fans, you're like, you should be winning them. And especially the context of Dundee United's at home and St Mirren is a must win. St Mirren's XG is 0.39. Dundee United is 0.64. And Motherwell's is 0.62. It's just so poor and this then leads into the main issue so we have a front five of creative players and the front five i've included in this are Lawrence shankland kenneth vargas alan forrest blair spittle and jan danda okay so in the 2023 24 season Lawrence shankland got 39 goal contributions 31 goals eight assists kenneth vargas got 13 goal contributions, 9 goals, 4 assists. Alan Forrest, 9 goal contributions, 4 goals, 5 assists. Blair Spittle, 22 goal contributions, 11 goals, 11 assists. Yeah. Jan Danda, 14 goal contributions, 6 goals, 8 assists. Playing for Ross County. So, between the 5 of them last season, they got 97 goal contributions. Thus, thus far... That's wild. I know it's only six games in, but thus far, in terms of contributions, Lawrence Shankland, one goal contribution, assist to Oda against Motherwell. Kenneth Vargas, zero goal contributions. Alan Forrest, zero goal contributions. Blair Spittle, one goal contribution this past I'll weekend. The weekend. I'll the weekend. Jan Danda, zero goal contributions. Two. So we've went, we've went down to hell. two. I genuinely I- didn't even think it was as high as that. That's the worrying thing. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm expecting us to have 20 goal contributions six games into the season. But what I'm saying is I don't think we should only have two as Hearts players, as a Hearts front line against the the opposition we've been playing. That is on Stephen Naismith. I do not believe that a front five, and like Spittle's been playing as a number six for most of the season, but I do not believe that that front five are just all off the boil that much that they can't even contribute. I got like none of them have scored. That's a key point. None of them have actually yeah, scored. Wild. It's two assists between them. Uh, there is there was no bright light in an offensive sense. No, and that's that's what has me worried for the weekend. It's like we got that bounce when Naismith came in. People forget. I, I had a few messages this week saying. We got that bounce against, funnily enough, Ross County who was yeah. the weekend in Naismith's first game. That nope. wasn't Naismith's first that game. That wasn't Naismith's first game. Easter Road. Yep. I think Hibbs' last win against us, Kevin Nisbet yep. goal. Like, we we need something similar to that, but it can't. this can't just be a freak result at the weekend. This has to be the start of something. This has to be the start of picking up points or a point in particular places. Um, I, I think the thing for me as well is I'm I'm worried as to how tense Tynecastle will be this weekend. And even in Stephen Naismith's statement, first of all, I couldn't believe that he'd been associated with Hearts for eight years. It's where the crazy. hell is the time gone? That's crazy. wild. Yeah. But the, the one sentence that I did pick out in it, which is a great quote, please understand the power of your support when used in the right way. We're in the shit. We're in the deep right now. We are desperate for a goal, a big moment, yep. but most importantly, three points. It's imperative, and I know that this is a real tough ask given the nature of our fan base. And yeah, I'm probably included in said moaners. But we've got to get behind them from the very first minute. Come a minute past three on Saturday afternoon, We've got to get just full of admiration, belief. Naismith's tenure has gone. Yep. This is it now. This is that that has to be put firmly to one side. We've just got to get behind the boys as best we can and hopefully cheer them on to to three points at the weekend. I but I'm I'm nervous. I can't lie because I think the longer that we go without a goal, if we if we start as we did throughout many games of Stephen Naismith's tenure, if we start so sluggishly, so slowly, then the anxiety creeps into the crowd and then it becomes trickier. 
by the polar opposite, if we break down the county door instantly, take an early lead, it could be jumping at the weekend. So I really hope it's the latter and not the former. Please show some support. Don't boo substitutions like was at the weekend. And let's ugh, let's just see what happens. But it has to be three points this weekend. Or I might have to take back everything about salvaging the season. We, we will be in the ship. Well, you perfectly segue because the man who will be in the dugout is the current B team manager, Liam Fox. And that was confirmed a few hours later yesterday afternoon and the statement read Heart and Midlothian Football Club can confirm that Liam Fox will take on the role of interim manager the B team head coach will temporarily oversee first team affairs whilst the board of directors undergoes the process of appointing a new management team Liam will be assisted in his position of interim manager by Angus Beath and Lee Wallace who currently assist with the B team and under 18s respectively speaking of the official Hearts website CEO Andrew McKinley said the board met today to agree a way forward in the process of identifying and hiring a new management team has already begun. In the interim, we welcome Liam, Angus and Lee to the first team and we'll give them all the backing they need as I'm sure the supporters will in order to turn around the present situation. Updates will be provided to supporters in due course but in the meantime, as you've kind of just said, I would ask our fans to continue their unrivaled backing of the team when we host Ross County at Tynecastle Park on Saturday as together we strive to take positive steps forward now a couple things that I want to ask you about the first thing is why are so many people annoyed that Liam Fox is the interim without seemingly understanding what interim means or surprised I mean yeah. who who else was going to take that job realistically Craig Levine if, get him in no exactly <laughs> I saw clamors being like oh well, Levine's just lost no 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 of course it's going to be somebody that's already within Down the, the hall. We, we literally just saw that with the manager that has just lost his job. Also, that's how interims work at every football club. And, and you said it there, temporarily. I would love nothing more for Hearts to start winning games of football. If that's Liam Fox, Lee Wallace and Angus Beath at the helm doing so, great. But let's not fall into the trap that we've just fallen into. Regardless of what happens here, if we win each and every single game and blow our opponents out the water... No, they are not being offered the job. Yeah. There's due diligence being carried on in the background. Let's just trust the people that are responsible for finding our new manager to actually find us a new manager. I don't want Liam Fox. I don't want anybody involved in Scottish football, really. I well, that then can play that segues into my next question because I was just going to say the second part was going to be what makes me feel old more than Naismith being here and more than Nielsen taking charge is the fact that Lee Wallace is now our assistant manager. I'm like, <laughs> fuck me, I'm old. But love it. I'm buzzing. And also, just as a personal thing, Liam Fox is like a massive Hearts fan, has come from a huge like fa a family of Hearts fan, played, played, signed for us before and at the end of his career, yeah, never got to play. That, am I? That was still, that was still not recovered from it. Now... He's going to get to manage us in Europe and like a home game at Tyne Castle. I'm chuffed for him. It's cool. Yeah, Fair it's cool. point. But yes, if you kind of listen to rumour and report, he's going to get three games. He's going to get Ross County, he's going to get Minsk, and he's going to get Aberdeen, which will take us to the October Those away break. games are disgusting, can I yeah, just say? Yeah, they are. And by the international break slash during it, we will appoint a new manager. Obviously, within the last 24 hours, the bookies have been out and the top two names oh, from within oh, Scottish oh. football are Derek McInnes and Stephen Robinson. Alex Neal's another one. Tiernan Lynch is the kind of exotic one that people are sharing, as exotic oh, yeah. as Belfast can be. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> large, fantastic. <laughs> Sign me right up. Now, ironically, out of those if names... exotic is Northern Ireland, we're in deep, deep trouble. I, ironically, Tiernan Lynch is the name out of all of them I'm, I'd be most interested in, seeing as the success he's had with Lauren, and it's something different. But yeah. Tony Bloom and Star Lizard will be deciding who our manager is in terms of the shortlist. The board which, will be picking from the shortlist. Sorry, McIver, because it's not actually been confirmed yet. It's yeah. just, I know it's been going on for months, but it is still just paper talk. Until the club actually come out and announce this, do you know what I mean? There's still that tight... It's going to happen, but there is still that tiny yeah, little head of scepticism where it's like, 
okay, so he's not in the door yet. He's not giving us a single penny, but he's going to choose our new manager. But that makes sense. That's a good thing to do. I, I, I'm not we, disputing that. It's yeah. just, it, it, it doesn't quite feel right. Well, it is, and it is happening. It's happening. So it's happening. We're get, just like Saturday, we're getting behind it. Yeah. And I think it is the very sensible, smart thing to do on a multitude of reasons. The first one being this board does not have a good track record of getting managers in consistently. The unproven guy, the old guy, the former club legend, we went outside the box with a German that had only previously managed in Barnsley in the UK. We've tried just about everything. So bun that. Now, in fairness, some of the... I, I, I know I've said I'm not on social media anymore, but I got sent a tweet by an insane thing where someone had said something about, like, we basically hadn't had a football manager since 2012, ignoring all the success we've had in the last... Day, where we've, like, multiple thirds, cup finals, playing in European group stages and stuff like that. Fucking it, Robbie Nielsen's one of the most successful... Arguably, statistically, the most successful manager of our lifetimes out with a trophy and stuff like that. I can't be asked getting in that fucking debate. But the board generally... That. The board generally does not have a good track record of getting managers that can be long-lasting, even. We'll even say that. It's a poison chalice, the hard job. So, it really is. So it makes sense to kind of be like, hi, the best recruiters, arguably, in world football. Can you do this for us, please? But secondly, it also makes sense from their perspective, because why would they be willing to invest all the money and we've turned around and went, well, we've appointed Derek McInnes. Does this fit into your <laughs> system at all? And it goes, uh, no, it doesn't actually. What are you talking about? So I think it's a massive positive that Star Lizard will be drafting up our shortlist. I agree with you. I do not want it to be anyone associated with British football in any way. I want it to be someone unique with a actually clear identity style with within the algorithm that shows it would work within Scottish football, aka Jimmy Thielen. That's who I like that, basically. Or maybe uh, Marty Cifuentes before yes. he did the CPR job. Yes. Can I, can I just say, as much as I would love all this, I like, we have had this kind of before with Stendhal to an extent, where it was like he was so stubborn within his ways to not change from that we didn't have the playing personnel to play the way that he wanted to play. So I'm saying this, but again, there is a small part of me that thinks, given a, given the given the board's track record that you've just alluded to, do we not need a safe pair of hands right now? To no. Me, that is Derek McInnes. And I know I'll get stick for that, but in terms of realistically, who is out there at the minute, I think he'd jump at the chance to manage Hearts. But it's so short term that I'm wanting something longer term. It, I, I'm so conflicted with what I want and what I think is going to happen. I, I don't honestly believe that what I want will happen. So therefore, I'm taking a backup stance to basically not be too glum when we when something inevitably goes wrong and we end up with a manager that the vast majority of the fan base don't want. Does that make sense? It does make sense, but I disagree with you for four different reasons. <laughs> so the first one being, I don't want Derek McInnes ever. I just do not, because we'll be here, we will be, as you say, it's so short term, we'll be here in 18 months with him sacked and Hearts fans who have put up with a bad football for the results, but then when the results stop coming, I, we're back in the same situation. I genuinely do not believe the football would be that bad. I do. But, but carry on. Two, the other point is Derek McInnes wouldn't jump at the chance to come to hearts there's yes, no way he would he wouldn't yes, because Derek McInnes doesn't work with directors of football he wants to be in total complete charge of recruitment he definitely doesn't work with algorithm based recruitment <laughs> networks who will be no, like no, no. I'm going to get you a specific type of player because they'll, they'll have had to have played for Aberdeen so you can expect Sam Paul to go in the room that's what I mean I, I, if you're asking me would you rather live in Kilmarnock or Edinburgh to manage Killy or Hearts it's a no-brainer. Now, yeah. you are right. Because but he the won't. mitigated factors, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, the power's above. But he's that old school. Does he just like Kelly or Edinburgh? No, no I think he's, he's that old school of like, here, I'm the main man. Whereas at heart, I'd just be like a part a of the machine the kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. Third, 
you talk shite anyway. Four. Um, the... <laughs> <laughs> that is not sufficient reasoning. The first two I'll give you, but the third is not. Just a so reminder. Just a reminder, GMS best player of the season, Yutaro <laughs> Oda, oh, most yeah, improved. you've got absolutely everything that you've ever <laughs> yeah, said right on this podcast. Absolutely, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But four, what you actually said about, oh, we brought in Stendhal and his style really didn't work with the playing squad that we had and that's completely spot on and then Stendhal wasn't a willing at all to fucking have a defense. <laughs> um, there should be something that goes beyond stubborn for Daniel Yeah, Stendhal. exactly. But that's how the algorithm works. Tony Bloom and Starlers will look at the squad and go, who is best to get the best out of this current squad and can build something with it? Because I'm Starlers just are... Uh, that's th- fair. This, this that is fair. This all far too good to be true. I alluded to it last week. There has to be some sort of catch. All I'm seeing... But the catch is Brighton, them getting more money. All I'm seeing from Brighton fans, from people that l- watch Belgian football, that talk about Union saint Gilles, it's all positive. There's nobody that has come in and slated it, and that <laughs> seems far too... That seems a world away from Heart of Midlothian Football Club. From getting beaten in pace. Regardless of how well we are performing, <laughs> there's always going to be something lurking in the background. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I just, it's, it's the most anti hearts thing to happen because it sounds too good to be true. But that's what's exciting about it. And that's why it's oh, like, right, absolutely. let's see what you I, can I, do. I, I'm all on board. I can't wait for us to pluck out some nobody from the Peruvian third division that we've never heard of as our gaffer. I'm all on board for it. It's going to be have, a great laugh. I, I've seen a few people ask, like, who would you like and stuff? Because I said, Sifuentes before Naismith. There's, I don't know why I just like picking Spaniards, but there's a guy. Oh, I, thought you, I thought you were going to go to Scandinavia. No, you seem you seem on this like Danish, Swedish. I would fucking love Norwegian us to get a Nordic manager. If we got that, I'd be like, I don't care what happens. Like, Viking hats in the stands at the castle. <laughs> My absolute dream. But there's a guy. It's not the Swiss left back Ricardo Rodriguez. It's the Spanish manager. Ricardo, Ricardo Rodriguez. Rodriguez the heart Imagine us manager. having Hearts that. Hearts manager, Ricardo Rodriguez. That would be class. Oh, that does have a nice ring. That reeks of Paolo Sergio. That, that's it, so exactly. Cool. Exactly. That's nice. Can I just say, people talking about Sergio for the job, please. Go, sh- that's a thing? What do you uh, mean that's a thing? Not yet, but there's bound to be something. All oh, right, okay. Because whenever the Hearts manager loses his job, it's, oh, well, Paolo did a great job. The club's yeah. in a much better place now. You've no. literally left the best possible way that you could ever leave. Yeah, as a why would you manager. ever come back? Why on earth would you try and come back to emulate better yeah. that and inevitably tarnish it? Please stop doing this. No. Yeah. Um, I don't think we will appoint Ricardo Rodriguez because I don't know if he fits in this algorithm, but he's just Who a name he that... Manage? I... So he Ricardo manages Rodriguez. in the J1 league, in the Chinese Super League. Um, he... Yeah, no, China. He manages China. in the uh, Wuhan Three Towns, I think is the name of them. And in the last three years, he was voted manager of the year in the J1 League uh, with Urawa Red Diamonds. And then he's won Tango the... Sold Tagawati. I no, thought we sold Tagawati and Antlers. Yeah, something like that. Did they banned um, from there? Are they linked? I, no, I, I thought it was all Tagawati. Japanese teams that we sold and bought oh, Tagawa I from. I, I, thought the, I thought the Diamonds were linked. But I, I did, um, Yeah, manager of the year. In 2021, I think it was. And then he won the Emperor's Cup, which is, as I understand, the League Cup. And then two years ago, he won the White like, Super Cup, which is the equivalent of like the Scottish Cup. Stuff like that. So he's he's won multiple I'm glad trophies. You said that, rather than these community shield type tournaments, because no. they're just a load of he's, he basically won like the equivalent of both our cups. So um, what he's a Spaniard managing in Japan. In China. Oh, China, sorry. Yeah. So, oh, okay. That, what a bizarre... I wonder. I don't know why I, I, I instantly thought of, like... By the way... Iniesta, basically, like... Ignore me, obviously. The J1 League is in Japan. He's now in China. Well, oh, I, right, I right, realise right. I said okay, that yeah. weird. Sorry. I, I said that as if the J1 League is the Chinese League. That's not what I meant. He was in the... Ch- Rodriguez. He I'll was... To, I'll need to look for Red book. Diamonds, he was in... Japan and, and now and now he's got a job in China. Right. Okay. Um, so wait. So hold on a second. So the fact that he's then leapt into another job is that 
That's truly. Well, it was two years ago. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. But as I say, I, I, it's just a name that's that like that's European interesting. Appreciate he's from Oviedo. The heritage that Scotland has, and you know, the founding fathers. Oh, that shite! <laughs> exactly. But tosh. when he's standing in the pissing rain and Greenock as we're struggling to win the win over Morton in the cup, he'll think, "Yeah, that's the right choice." I left all the money in China to come here. Exactly. But yeah, listen, I just want a name like that. I want a name oh, that I know absolutely. nothing about. I want a name like that. Yes, exactly. But until we get to that point, we've got Don Cowie coming with Liam Fox in the <laughs> dugout. You've alluded to it. It's a massive fucking game. A huge game. Myself. Lee Wallace is in the dugout. I'm buzzing for that. He'll bring his gun. It'll be great, right? <laughs> what is your score prediction? Also, actually, more important, not more importantly, the score is the most important oh, thing. But say you're going to say that about the team. What team I was going to say, do you subscribe to the fact, to the idea that I kind of do, that Liam Fox is just going to play the simplest team and just be like, everybody in your right position, just do what you would normally do? That sounds far too much like common sense, Daniel McIver. That would be that would be great. I would love nothing more than that. Uh, to be able to actually read the 11 names that come out that Hearts put in numerical order for some bizarre reason and go right, right centre back, left centre back, left back, right back, two DMs, three in behind, bang. That would be great. I would really like that. Do I think? And who I think is going to play? I don't know. Jan Danda has to start for me. I Point think. To prove against the former club, it's written in the stars. I agree with that. I think if he's fit on the left, Barry Mackay will play. Interesting. Because, because Barry Mackay turns into hopes. Messi yeah. against lower division kind of level teams. He'll get three ha- assists. Oh, a bit disrespectful to Don Kerry's staggies, but you do you. What a team. Well, it's fine. Um, he'll get three assists and then we'll play like. <laughs> Hebs and he'll get subbed off after 25 minutes for day oh, no. He'll be rewarded with a start of tawdry and then be hooked on yes. 50 minutes. There you go. That's the example. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. But yeah, I know he's been out. Yeah, that's not a bad so show. Yeah, I don't know. I the bad guys even still I know. here. I've no idea what the fuck's going on. Um, I'd like to see Musa. I want to see Musa. Can I say the treatment of him on it Saturday was such it was a shame. Nothing short of a disgrace. Yeah. It's appalling. I feel for the guy. I Same. really, really do. Um, I I think we'll see him at some stage Yeah. on Saturday. Whether that's from the start... I think he'll come off the bench. I'm convinced. Yeah, I think so as well. What is your score prediction for the game? <laughs> <laughs> ah! Uh, this is... This is... What I face every day in life, MacIver, it's a, it's a battle between my head and my heart. Um, what do I think will happen? What do I want to happen? I would love for us to batter them six one again. Again. <laughs> do I think that's realistically going to happen? No. I think it'll be. I have to be as positive as I can. It'll be an edgy one nil or two one win. I was going to say 2-1 win. I don't but see, see us keeping a clean sheet. sheet. No. <laughs> no. So I'll go for a 2-1. A dodgy 2-1. I was also going to say 2-1 in fairness. With Jan Danda grabbing the winning goal. And shushing. To it on the first Cutting his fight. ear and then just get it up you. Exactly. Oh, I really hope so. I really yeah, hope bloody so. Bloody better be or... I know. Um, you could just discount the previous 45, 50 minutes. Yeah. Because I was spoken utter tosh. No change from usual, right enough. But yeah, I right, exactly. That was point three. But <laughs> we will see what happens. But of course, we finish with the quiz now. I'm, I'm really scared. I'm more scared for Saturday, but I'm really scared as this with this quiz as well. I've and not... I'm scared about the Tony Bloom involvement most of all, because again, <laughs> something has to go wrong. This... I saw. I saw today that he was so, so, sorry to cut you off, but no, it's supposedly right. that Aberdeen was potentially an option. That's a shame. That's what I was saying to so, you. And Dave Cormack just basically said, "No, he, he Dave Cormack wants complete one hundred percent control." So he just went, "Nah," so that he can greet on the radio again when he yes, cocks it exactly. Nice. So this is one of the quizzes where I wouldn't be surprised if he got five out of five, none out of five, or three out of five. 
So, Mount Hee Haw. Let's see. So, question one is your multiple choice. Oh, good, because I was bored well in them. Yep. Losses to St Mirren have been the final nail in the coffin for the last three Hearts managers. But who lost by the biggest margin? Is it A, Robbie Nielsen? Is it B, Stephen Naismith? Or C, Daniel Stendhal? A, Robbie Nielsen. Could you get the scoreline as well? 2-0, no. He smashed it. It's Robbie Nielsen, 2-0 loss to St Mirren oh, at home. Oh, God. The, the well only one other worrying one was Stendhal. Did we lose that 1-0? That was the Abika, Abika. game. Yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah. if we'd lost 2-1 or 1-0. Yeah. So a 2-0, two, a 2-1, two a and a 1-0. Yep. Right in the scoreline. Exactly. So, yeah. Same Fantastic. result, but different yeah. scores. Yeah, St Mirren just keep sacking hearts managers. Was, was there not something like five of the last nine? Yeah, it was something ridiculous. Crazy. It was something insane. Yeah. Play them in what? November, December time or something? No, we play them in two weeks or something. Like that. Three weeks? The October? Is yeah, because obviously this was meant to be in December. Oh, so we yeah, play them in October, I think. Take your time with the appointment. Don't bring somebody in immediately. I think the new gaffer's second game or third game will be against St. Mary. If if, if we if the timeline is yeah, right. Oh dear God, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> that would be that would be something. Mad Vlad, are you at the helm? What's happening <laughs> exactly. here? Exactly. But listen, one from one, you've not got zero. Thank God. Question two. Craig Halkett scored his first hearts goal at the weekend this season. But when was the last time he scored for us prior to this? Oh, dear God. Oof. I'm chuffed with this question. I can see why. Why did I not? I just didn't watch <laughs> sports scene. I was too depressed. Did <laughs> this didn't t- sports scene? No, but Laurie on Hearts TV, which is how I was watching it, said it is first goal since the 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 season... And I went back and checked the season and was like, oh, that was his goal. Is it obvious? Yeah. I've got since Rangers at Ibrox in my head, but I'd like to think they scored sooner than that. If it is Rangers at Ibrox, that's wild. It can, it, he has to have scored for us since then, but nothing's, nothing's coming into my head. How long ago was that? That was... The first season we came back up, so that would have been what? Three years ago. Two, 23, is that right? No, that would have been 21-22. Because 2021, 2021, 2021 was the championship season, then 21-22 yes, was the right. first one that Aye, we came right. up. Bye. Yeah, you're right. So 20, no. So your guess has, is three years ago. He has to have scored more recently than that. But I, I, again, nothing is, nothing's popping in, in my head here. It has to. Is it obvious? You sort of said I yes. would. I would say so. No, no, I can't. I can't think. I'm just gonna have to go for that Rangers eyebrow because I know it's wrong, but nothing else. I, is this gonna be one of those ones where it's like, oh shit, it is, isn't it? So the reason it's obvious is because you got it immediately. It's his 90th is minute it? equaliser wow. against Rangers on the 16th of October, Jesus. 2021. Three wow. years ago, almost. Almost exactly three years ago. Wow. He's been hurt for so long, if you remember. Like, for about 14 know, but, months of that, he's been out. But you would have thought that he would have had something. Yeah, but, unless, I'm, unless I've fucked it. But Laurie said it was his first goal since the 2021-2022 season. And I went by and checked every game in that season, and that was the most recent game. I, fair play. I've, I've amazed myself there. Yeah, because I, well done. I honestly thought they'd score more recently than that. Two for two. True or false oh. next. Oh, gee, this is where it all goes peak tongue. True or false. Stephen Naismith, prior to the weekend, was unbeaten versus St Mirren as Hart's boss. So, no, oh, no. Oh, 
who is managing us when Ryan Strain scored that free kick and they won one nil? That's the question. I I oh, really wanted to say it was true, but I think I think it's false. I'm going false. Correct. It is false. He actually, as a result of the weekend, had a perfectly average record. He played St. Mirren six times, two wins, two draws, two losses. Wow. Interesting. So, so, did we not go on beating against St. Mirren last season? Yes, we did. Yeah. yeah. So then it would have been prior to that. Was or no, no, that no. That We lost once and it was the first game that season and it was that 1-0. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then the rest that, of the season we went sense. unbeaten. We drew. We had a couple. All right, so the, the we had like a two-all draw was on Saturday. Was, the, was on Saturday. All yeah. Right. Oh, I've done. I, I'm doing all right here. I tell you, this is That's one of them that could it. either be amazing or terrible. Right. Last but question before the am I? On it. I know. What was the score the last time Hearts played Ross County? <laughs> um, I'll give you a clue it was last season <laughs> thanks for that did we not lose 2-1 up in Dingwall is that your answer yeah I'm going with that we lost 2-1 up in Dingwall he's got Come 4 on. from 4 will this yeah. be the first time ever Adam has got 5 from 5 in a quiz no something's bound to go wrong well, the who am I is here, so Come let's on, see. get the thinking cap on. Oh, oh this would be brilliant. Right. This would be really good. Because I who don't am even I? think I've been, I don't even think I've been decent on the pod tonight. But <laughs> it would be my performance would be salvaged with this. Right, are you ready? Hit me with it. I signed for Hearts to replace a beloved player, but never quite reached the same heights. Despite that, though, I did score a very memorable goal. I exclusively played in Scotland and England, and at one of my other clubs, I scored only one goal, a winner against Hibs. Who am I? Oh, what a hero. <laughs> I think you were going to say against Tars. I was going to say no, no surprise there. <laughs> a winner against Hibs. I've got this man's Wikipedia page up now. I'm kind of, I, I want to go with questions that I wouldn't usually ask. Okay. Because usually it's, when did they play for Hearts, the list of clubs, yada, yada, yada. The usual. A winner against Hibs. Because I kind of want to ask what ground did they score the winner against Hibs at? But if you say Easter Road, then I haven't got a hint as to who they've played for. Yeah, that's true. So, <laughs> there's, a, there's an element of risk in yep. that question. It would be funny if it was at Easter Road. So, <laughs> <laughs> it have taken that well. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Exclusively in Scotland and England. Yep. So Hearts weren't all. Hearts can't have been the only Scottish club that they played for, given that winner against Hibs. So I can't, I can't even ask that. Hey, I'm gonna ask that ground question. Which ground did they score the winner against Hibs at? Please don't be Easter Road. You're it was Easter Road. Oh, <laughs> That's a question wasted. Lovely. <laughs> um... <laughs> okay. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> now I just bail myself out with asking about the clubs. Oh, a clown. But then, oh, the year could be fucking anything. Why did you ask that, you idiot? It's the worst question that's ever been asked in the I know it is. <laughs> I've done so well up to that point. I had to find a way to fuck up eventually. If you still get this, fuck me. This will be uh, that will be probably my favorite moment in podcast this Yeah, year. that's fair. That's the it'd be in my top three. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. Right. Or did I just ask when they played for hearts? 
That would at least be a clue. If I think of somebody. Yeah. What years did they play for Hearts, MacGyver? Between which like between which years, which seasons did they play for Hearts? They played for Hearts between 2001 and 2004. Oh, I'm so fucked. <laughs> I don't have a clue. When you were like, I don't want to ask the usual questions. In my head, I was like, this is one where you need to ask the usual questions. Don't have a clue. 2001 and 2004. You don't know the clubs. You don't know the position. Nope. <laughs> yeah, a winner could be a centre-back from a corner. No idea. I've only got myself to blame for sheer stupidity. But let's be honest. Still I, I get this. I, I wasn't getting this. 2001 and 2004 this. is a, a, that is stabbing the dark. I'm control. willing you. I'm willing you to get this. Do you want the clues again? Please. Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Assigned for Hearts to replace a beloved player but couldn't quite reach the same heights. Despite that, though, I did score a very memorable goal. I exclusively played in Scotland and England. At one of my other clubs, I scored only one goal, a winner against Hibs at Easter Road. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> added added needless detail there. Yep. You fucking idiot. Um ah, oh, a lot of swearing in this podcast, but I'm angry. I at love you, it. And I'm angry at hearts. I love I'm it. angry at myself. More importantly, apologies for the language. I uh, two thousand and one to two thousand and four, replacing a beloved player. Who would have left in 2001? Like, this is before <laughs> I started going to games. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is done. I'm so done here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I would no idea. Absolutely no idea. I can't... I kind of want to say Mark DeVries, but it can't be. Give me the clues again. Sorry, McIver. Assigned for Hearts to replace a beloved player but couldn't quite reach the same heights. Despite that, though, I did score a very memorable goal. I exclusively played in Scotland and England. At one of my other clubs, I scored only one goal, a winner against Hibs. Yes, that, uh, that just dismisses my... That was just a name plucked from nowhere. <sighs> Scotland and England. Would it be his partner, Andy Kirk? A memorable goal. Could be in that MDV Derby, that Derby debut. The first Hearts goals that I ever saw from Andrew Kirk. I love him as a result of that. A trip down memory lane. Now he's lad, he's playing for St Johnston. And he's taking over from Levine at St Johnston. You alluded to that earlier. Does that make me think that you're maybe going for him? Macaulay Tate was born on that day. Would he have scored the winner for a Dunfermline at Easter Road? I'm trying to think of who else he played for. Well, we I don't have anybody else see. in my head, so let's go for it. No, we picked, we picked him up from Northern Ireland. That makes no sense. That's rubbish. Let's not go for Andy Kirk. Oh, my God, you clown. Macaulay Tate was born on the day that Craig Gordon made that save against Motherwell. Which is wild. That's what I'm getting it mixed up with. Oh, there's nobody else that's popping in my head here. <laughs> I really do hate myself for the questions that I asked, but I, I was never getting it. Let's just say Andy Kirk. It's not, but I'll say Andy Kirk because we've alluded to him and we picked him out previously. Who is it? Adam is going for five out of five. He's got the four first out of five. Time. Just cut to the chase. As it currently stands, Adam is still searching because it's not Andy Kirk. If I tell you who the memorable goal is against, do you think you could get it? It won't count, but I want to see if you can get it. Possibly. Go for it. He scored a winner against Celtic. Austin McCann, no? It's Austin McCann! Yeah. I wouldn't have got that. Who did he score the winner against Hibs for? Dunfermline. Yeah. If you'd asked clubs, you might have got it because you knew he played for Dunfermline. I, I, I honestly don't think I would have. 
to yeah. be honest. To be perfectly honest. But or if that's, you'd that's asked, good who I'm if you'd asked, who did he score the goal against? That might have. Yeah, yeah, that, that was that was a better question. But yeah, he signed but to replace then, the the goal against Celtic. You didn't say winner in the clues, did you? No, I just said he scored a very memorable goal. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I'd have got that. From it's a, it was a hard a one. In fairness, it was a hard one. Who, yeah. So, who the so hell did he replace? Was it out in the out in the flank? Gary Naismith. We sold Gary Naismith wow. and bought Austin McCann to replace him. Um, my fi- that Austin McCann goal is one of my Where favorite did you even goals. Sign Austin McCann from? Yeah, uh, we signed him from Airdrie. Horrible football club. Continue. Yep. The that Austin McCann goal is one of my favorite Hearts goals ever because I've never had a crowd get so gutted when the ball is passed to a player. <laughs> like I can't even remember who it is that's sprinting I, I, through. I don't know. When Liam Boyce received it on Saturday, there was plenty that were up that's true persuasion and opinion. I can't, someone's running through. It's that o two o three season. It's maybe Mark De Vries. I genuinely can't remember. But somebody's running through, and it has an option. He's right. And doesn't use it and uses Austin McCann. And the whole crowd's like, yeah, it's it. it. Gets put to Austin McCann. You hear everyone go, oh. But then McCann obviously just hits it for like 30 yards and it goes in. And it's like, oh, it's amazing. And then, like yeah. Ali Mosturk before he's yeah, the road. It's exactly. Like, oh, you're not seriously doing Oh, my God. So he left us and played a few games at Clyde before moving to Boston um, in England. And he also played for uh, Notts uh, yeah, County. Thanks. I didn't think he was playing for the bloody Boston Red Sox. I did listen to the clues. I just didn't know who it was. He did ask a mental question, so I'm just making sure. Uh, <laughs> Notts County as well. And then Dunfermline. Who was that? Notts County? Notts County, yep. Yeah. Uh, see, these clubs, I'd have been lost. Dunfermline. <laughs> absolutely goosed. Dunfermline, then Ayr, and then his final club was Clyde Bank, which is oh. where he's from. Another horrible football club. Jesus. Yeah, but listen, four out of five. Well, yeah, exactly. Ooh. It's a very good performance. Very good Ooh, performance. Screw well, yourself for a silly question. Let us know if you managed to get Austin McCann. And if you have enjoyed this, also, because of the nature of this episode, let us know who you are interested in for new managers and stuff like that. Either be in the comments on YouTube, where please leave a like, subscribe, and do all that kind of patter. If you've been enjoying the podcast generally, please leave a like and just kind of like general review on your podcast platform of choice, it really does help us. Better to pay us on all the socials if you want to tweet us or anything, Instagram comments and stuff like that, who you think we should have in charge next, unless it's Derek McInnes, because I know a bunch of you are going to say that anyway. Better to Paisley at gmail.com if you want to fire us over an email. Adam, where can they get you on all the socials? Uh, you can find me on all the socials, doing my digging on Ricardo Rodriguez at Adam T. Kendall. <laughs> and yeah, I, I look forward to seeing him at that, on that Tyne Castle touchline. Hopefully rocking some sexy Armani suit, no Lyle Scott, unless it's washing his big, massive merc. Exactly. And just a man of class and culture. I know nothing about the guy, so I'm off to find He's out 50, so he's in that middle period. He could be like... Oh, so is there grace coming through? Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, Stunning. My kind of man. Exactly. We will be back next week to discuss all the fallout from Liam Fox's first match in charge as Interim Hearts manager. Hopefully, hopefully our first win, and if there's any update with the managerial search. But until then, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.